Hello everybody, it's Dream Model Horses I'm here again. And in today's video, we are going to be making a DIY halter and lead rope together for um like horses and or even model horses. So um yes, um it's gonna be super super fun and I will show you on how I make my halters and lead ropes for my model horses that I sell and keep both. So um, let's get started to the materials that we will need today. So we will be needing 1 8 gross grain ribbon or satin ribbon, your decision, and I will be using these colors today. Um, forest green and light pink, I think it's a good combo together. Some embroidery floss to match the, um, the, right, the ribbon, um, and this is going to be for the lead ropes, so just need some embroidery floss as well. We will also be needing five mm, six millimeter jump rings alongside with a little tiny um, four millimeter jump ring. If you're doing like, then yes, you will need a four millimeter. If you're doing like a briar traditional or something, then you'll just need like six of, of these six millimeter jump rings. So, but if it's like, you'll need one millimeter um, or four millimeter uh, of one of, you know, these. <laughs> And a 10 millimeter lobster clasp, 20 gauge wire that we will be using for the buckle. Fray check. Um, you can use hot glue to uh, fray check the end, um, like to, to fray check the halter, but I usually like using fray check, so, but you can always use hot glue if you have none of this, but I do recommend this. It's, it's better and it, it's more cleaner, but hot glue. Hot glue would work just fine. And we will be needing some pliers and wire cutters. Tweezers. Tweezers are usually optional, but I like using them um, because, especially for like the Schleich halters, because they're um, easy, like they're very small, so. But it, tweezers are optional. And obviously we will be needing a hot glue gun at all times. And last but not least, a model horse, which here Alaska is going to be our model to for the halter. So yeah, we obviously need a model horse. <laughs> so um, to get started, once your hot glue gun is ready um to like be used, you take one jump ring, the six millimeter one, and then you take one of your ribbon colors you could also use like um you could have your halter be one color but i'm using two today so um yeah so we are going to be threading this ribbon through the jump ring they're kind of like folding it over as you can see kind of like that as you can see and then we are going to be gluing it i'm sorry this is kind of hard to show but you kind of like want to put some glue on that. Then you fold it over. As seen. And then you just press it down. Um, you can wait a few seconds if you want. So you don't burn your fingers. But yes. After you're done. Um, yes. Oh, then obviously there's some glue that's sticking out. So we just trim those. With scissors. Yes. I forgot to add the scissors. Yes. Of course. We're going to need scissors as well. So um, you kind of. At first you kind of want to. Want to trim maybe i mean it doesn't have to be way too long but maybe like if you could see like that because when first like you don't really need it um too long because it's not really how their nose brand goes so next up you can trim the edges which i'll be right back and it should be looking like this with the tab folded on the other side the you could call it the ugly side <laughs> So, um, next you want to take another 6mm jump ring, you want to thread it through the other end of where the other jump ring is, and then you want to fold it over again on this side, and then you want to measure it on mm -hmm. um, the horse to kind of like, I recommend going to where the cheek piece is, not really to where, you know, um, towards the mouth because... Um, that's just more, I guess, realistic, you could say, but once it's kind of like measured, like, 
You can see kind of like that. Then you want to hold the tab. Put your model horse aside. And then you glue it. <laughs> now, I'll be honest, gluing on camera is so hard. But, you know, we're just going to deal with it. But I think you could see on what I'm doing right here. Just dabbing some glue on the tab part. And then you fold it over, like as we did previously on the other side. And then you just want to trim off the edges if there's any glue that's that just came out. And what I like to do if this isn't, you know, uh, glued down, I usually trim it like that. And then kind of glue it so that it doesn't, you know, fray or anything. Even though I do have fray check, but it's not really used for this part, but it just keeps it more sturdier. And this is for the top of the nose band. All right. So you got the first part of the top of the nose band. Now we're going to be doing the second part to it. So you want to thread it through one of the sides of the jump rings right here. Make sure it's on the side where the other tabs are folded. And you know, we just want to cut it, not, not too much, but a certain amount where you think it'd be, you know, fine to uh, thread through the other side. But anyways, um, so next we're going to fold this again and glue it, obviously. This nice little tab. So that it holds on. There we go. Just press it down. Then you could trim off the excess glue. That comes out. Like that. <laughs> um, so this part this part gets kind of tricky because we are going to be um threading it through the other side of the jump ring. So you're kind of gonna have to so this um the good side, you could say, you could you have to thread it through the other side of this jump ring. I hope this is making sense. It's kind of hard for me to explain, but as you can see, kind of like that. And then you want to just hold it like that, put it on your model horse gently without it being glued. Then you want to measure it and just so you know, it's, it's on the bad side where the tabs are facing. And you kind of like want to measure to see... Um, how it's gonna fit and everything and once it's um you got it to its um place where you want it to be like measured you just gently take it off hold the tab and by the way this is like flipped inside out because you know <laughs> and then you want to trim off the the excess extra of the you know um ribbon then you want to glue this tab down right over here as you can see um so then just hold it on so it doesn't come apart then you can trim off the extra glue that comes out so once that's done you want to flip it inside out like so and then you just want to put it on your model horse to see if it fits and it does as you can see our nose band <laughs> so yes we got the nose band part complete now we're going to move on to the cheek pieces so for the cheek pieces we are going i'm going to be using this color because i'm going to alternate my colors throughout this halter so we're going to kind of move the um these pieces to the side on the jump ring then we're going to thread this part through um on the good side through this jump ring fold it like a tab like so and then you kind of like just want to it doesn't matter for how like much you trim but i guess it depends on what you want to do but like about that you could see like about um i don't know <laughs> i really don't know my measuring <laughs> excuse me okay and then we're gonna just you know glue this down so like so you just fold it down once the glue is applied As we can see and then we just trim off the ec the extra glue that squeezes out like so 
as known. All right. And then next, we are going to take another um, six millimeter jump ring, thread it through this side. And then you could measure on this part, but I don't measure anymore um, on my horses because I kind of already have it memorized, but I like to make it kind of short about like that. I, I just said, like, I don't want it to, like, they're usually not too long or else we don't want long cheek pieces. Horse like is supposed to be a little more, I don't know. Um, anyways, so yes, uh, and then we just glue that down. And this is the result that you would want to have. As a cheek piece and then we just repeat the same thing on the other side so i'll see you when you are done with that all right so once you are done um with the other side of the cheek piece we are going to kind of um we're going to be making the chin strap part of it like the i don't know called the chin piece i'm not sure but um i'm going to be using my green again even though if i could even get this out which is okay okay are you working with me I'll be right back. Some crafting difficulties, but um, uh, next up we're gonna cut like maybe about not too much of this, but kind of like uh an an inch and a half about of um ribbon. Yes, ribbon. <laughs> um, forgetting these names, I'm sorry. Um, but anyways, so on one side of the jump ring, we are going to be threading this through, folding it like so as we know, and then just gluing it down, gluing the tab down. And so like that, as seen, now um, on the uh, the bad side, the ugly side, um, we're gonna kind of turn this a little, like kind of like that. Um, so, uh, sorry, my cameras aren't focusing today. So you're gonna wanna thread this through this part of the jump ring kind of like having like this but then we turn it and then threading it through this other side of the jump ring well the other cheek piece and then we're threading it through slowly as we could see kind of the chin strap is already forming i hope this is making sense if it doesn't please type in the comments below because if i'm unclear about things but anyways so and then you kind of want to measure on your horse i don't really measure anymore because i already know but kind of like to see where it would end, like right at the end of the cheek up there. But I don't really measure anymore because, I mean, obviously I have been doing this for years. But all right then. And then once you've found the good size for your horse, you just want to snip off some of it and then glue it down. So once that's completed, it should be looking more like this, like with the cheek piece. And the, well, like the chin. Um, ah, what's wrong with my myself today? But um the chin strap or i don't know if it's a strap but the chin piece so uh like this hopefully it makes sense um now we're gonna do I i'm not sure what this part is called but kind of like where it connects to the bottom like both of the bottoms like underneath the nose band and under and the chin strap or chin piece i'm not sure so let's get started to that we're gonna put our halter aside just for now and take our um four millimeter jump ring and then i will be using this pink you're gonna want to cut off about that much i'd say and then kind of want to make a little angle on it kind of like that then take your jump ring the little one then slowly with the angle um that was cut just slowly thread it through is i know it's gonna fray but we're gonna cut this piece off just like that and then you want to fold it over then cut off the extra ribbon there we go and then we just glue it and then it should be looking like this a little piece for the under part of the, the halter so then you want to take your halter again and then it this piece will be going uh, right here it's going to connect but we are going to be using our last jump ring, the six millimeter jump ring, and we are going to be opening it with your pliers. Take one end and then kind of open it as seen. And this is connected. Ooh, 
All right. And then with the um, under part of the nose band, you're going to want to hook it on like so. And then with this part, this part might be a little tricky, but you are going to want to, the bad side is going to have to face up front. Uh, well, kind of like that, as you can see. And then we're going to hook it on. Close this jump ring so that this jump ring could slide. And the next, with this little remaining piece, we are going to glue it on, as I will show you. You'd about you'd want to make it like that. And then this part might be tricky again, but you want to fold it over this ribbon, the cheek piece, and then Holding it, you're gonna glue it onto the back. You're gonna glue it back onto this um, this little piece right here. So, hopefully that makes sense. I'm not too sure. I'm not too good at explaining, but there we go. Then we just glue it on, and then you could always cut off some of the extra, and then here we go. And then we could always fit it back on our horse. See how it's going, which as we could see, it's fitting quite good. So next up, we're gonna move on to making a buckle. So making a buckle is quite the difficult, but eventually, it, like I make square buckles, I don't make the round buckles, but so what you're gonna wanna do is take your 20 gauge wire and your pliers, then you wanna take the end. I, I might have the grip so it's more easier, but you're going to want to curve it to one angle, then just take the other side, curve it to one angle again, and then you're kind of going to be making a square, as you could say. Just remember on how to make a square. <laughs> and then curve it again. Ah, sorry, my camera's not focusing. Focus. Focus. I'm sorry, it's, ha it's having trouble with difficulties, but anyways. Then you're gonna wanna take the other part of the square, or this part right here, this part right here. <laughs> I hope, I mean, I'm better at showing than explaining, so. Technically, outside of the square, you're gonna wanna make an another square, curve it again, kinda like the same process as you did on the first part, except you're only gonna be making two parts of the square. And then, wanna curve it again, as seen. I'm sorry, my, I don't know what's wrong with my camera today, but... And then you're going to want to cut the extra right, right there. And then you can shape in, uh, shape in this um, back like that, if that makes any sense. And then after that, next you're going to want to take your ribbon. I'm going to be using this color, and then threading it through the first part of the buckle. And then threading it through the second part, as seen, like that. Threading it through. And once that's threaded through, you're going to want to um, cut some, some of it off, like about approximately kind of like that. Then you fold it over the tab. You cut off the fraying ends. And then you glue it down. And once you glue it down, you are going to be taking your halter. And I usually like doing it on, um, let's see, the left side of the halter because it's, I don't know, it feels more, I don't know, I just do it. <laughs> so, and then we're going to thread this through the top part of this jump ring. Kind of fold it over like a tab. And then kind of, you can always measure it like on, like, your cheek piece and to see where the buckle would you know and and I like it right like by the ear the buckle to sit so I'd say about right there then we're gonna cut off the extra then glue it down and then it should be looking like this with one buckle on the side well one side is the buckle and the other side we're gonna um just fold the piece over so from coming from the 
this side we are going to be threading the ribbon right through this other jump ring, pulling it at a certain length, and then cutting the ribbon not too long but not too short on however long you want to cut it. Cut the extra and then we just glue this down. So then your halter should be looking like this. And then, um, I know I, usually I put keepers on, um, this side. I mean, it's more or less optional, but I usually like it to style my halters more, but, um, so that they look more cleaner, but I'm not going to show it into this, in today's, um, video because I feel like it's, um, I don't know, it's a little too hard to show, so we're just going to keep it a simple way of making the halter, but anyways, so once you're done, you're going to thread this through the buckle on the other side, threading it through like this. There we go. Once it's threaded through, we put it on our model horse. Kind of fold this over. And then from this side, we just tighten it. And then you kind of want to adjust the halter to make it look more neat. Once that's finished, you're going to cut the extras off, kind of making it a certain length on however you want it to be. Kind of make it like a tip so it's easier to adjust. Then you take your free check or your hot glue gun, or you can hot glue it, but I usually like free check and I just dab it. The end so it won't fray. Kind of just... And yes, free check does have to dry, so. But there we go. And your halter is complete. But we're not quite done yet because we are going to make, be making our lead rope now. So um, if you don't want to make a lead rope, then you could stop here. But if you do, of course, you should stay on. So let's get to that. So I usually like to use just a tape roll and like some kind of a I know it looks really weird and messy honestly I cannot find anything else but I usually love doing this even though it's such a weird piece of junk but you know it's okay I usually use a pin and look I know I gotta clean it I know I know but it's like <laughs> kind of hard sometimes but I use a tape roll with um or what are these called again attack or something whatever <laughs> so I'm gonna be using this um, you want to take your lobster cross. Oh, um, if you're going to be making a lead rope, you're going to need to get one more six millimeter jump ring. Like so. You're going to take your pliers, open it, and then take your lobster cross and thread, or not thread, but put this through. Close it. And then you got a jump ring connected with the lobster class and then you want to take out your tack or just some kind of like a clamp or something but I usually like putting it through like something to hold this on like when we're gonna be twisting or braiding the lead rope and then I usually like to put these things on because it's it's the most easiest way to hold it on so and then with the embroidery floss you're gonna want to cut if you're doing a twisted lead rope you're you're gonna want to cut um or yeah um six i believe six strings about let's see about five inches long about five or six i have six inches long i'd say three um six strings three of this color three of this color but um it, i don't know what color it is but it just needs to be six um strings in the lead rope so i'll see you once i cut mine so i cut my strings and um they're about six inches to seven inches i don't know it really doesn't matter how long just as long as they're not way too short or way too long so i see about six inches but you know we're just gonna deal with it but anyways yes <laughs> so first you want to take your green strings um you can use any color but i'm just using my green strings and you're gonna thread them through the jump ring. I had to twist them. There we go. Like that as seen. And then next you are going to be taking 
your pink strings, threading through, thre I can't speak, threading them through the same jump ring on the side. Ugh, just get this through. Sometimes it's really hard to thread thre this through, so like that. I uh, see. All right, so next thing you want to do is you're going to take your strings, your two sets of strings, and then twist them this way, but then twist it the opposite way. So we're going to be twisting these to the right, but then we're going to be folding them over to the left, if that makes any sense. Then you just want to keep repeating that. And then you can see that we're already getting the twisted look. And then you just want to repeat that until you think it's um, good enough for... Um, you can make your lead loop as long as you want or as short as you want. But, yep, this is how you're going to make the lead rope. And I'll be right back once it's all completed. Alright, so once you made it um, the length that you want it to be, you're going to hold the end. Kind of uh, on how to make the knot where you're going to twist it. Or like make a loop on a lead rope and then kind of pull the these ends. Oh, I, sorry about that. I'm gonna pull it through the loop, kind of like on how you would make a knot. And apparently, it did not all come in like usual. <laughs> um, just hold on, trouble difficulties. All right, and once that's pulled through, you just wanna pull your lead rope. Well, pull the knot. <laughs> And then you just want to pull it tight, so it's all nice and snug. And then you're going to want to cut, cut it off to make it a little fluff at the end. And then you're basically done with your lead rope and you can pull it off. And then our final thing to do is you open the lobster clasp and then clip it onto the halter. And then you are officially done. So that is officially on how to make a halter and lead rope, and I hope you y'all enjoyed um, this video. Either if you followed it along, or you just wanted just to watch it. So don't forget to like this video and subscribe if you haven't, and um, hit that notification bell so that you'll get notified when I release a new video. And that will be the end of this video. So see you in the next video.